Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to lesson number eight from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student. My name is Karen Mazokere. This is the grade 12 book. There's also grade 10 and grade 11 for economics. Um, you can also buy the grade uh, 11 and 12 business studies. Uh, the grade 10 business studies is not yet out. All right, so let's get down to the lesson. Um, to begin, uh, I gave you homework in the previous lesson, lesson number seven. And so, yes, here is the revision for the homework. So you are supposed to define these terms and then uh, you calculate the multiplier and so on. Okay, I think it was quite an easy one. All right, so there are the answers. You can mark yourself. And just pointing out that uh, whenever you, in the exam, this one is most likely to be a four mark question. So when you are answering this one, uh, it's advisable to uh, ensure that you follow each step because the memo might be saying give a mark for each and so if you just take this and from here you go to the answer you risk getting two out of four so uh, I always say you know you won't die if if you write the whole thing and you are not wasting time because the risk of just taking these two, you know, yeah, it's possible that they'll give you full marks, but why take the chance? All right, so let's get down to the lesson. Now, in this lesson, we are going to do the graphical illustration of the multiplier, and we are going to use one of the examples from the previous lesson. Uh, if you remember very well, I mentioned um, that time when we started in lesson number seven, that the, the, the definition of the multiplier effect does not make much sense to someone who's just starting, um, maybe until they see the graph that I'm about to show you. So we say the multiplier um, effect can be described as a situation where a small change in spending causes a disproportionate change in aggregate demand and hence aggregate income. Right, I don't like this definition here. I like the one that I just said. So for our graphical illustration of the multiplier effect, we are going to use example number two from lesson number seven um, to, you know, to make sense to you, to try and make sense to you. So remember I said Warren Buffett injected uh, 20 billion US dollars for the construction of a new car manufacturing plant. Right, so let's get down to the graph and let's see what's happening. Right, so we have our expenditure axis and our income axis uh, like this. And then we have this, it's our 45 degree line as the line of equilibrium. This is a line where expenditure is equal to income. All right, then uh, we want to assume that we have uh, 650 billion rand expenditure. And if that's the case, uh, we also want to assume that we have 780 billion Rand as our income. And then uh, what would happen if we inject 20 billion? Uh, okay, in this case, it's Warren Buffett inject, injecting 20 billion into the economy because he wants to build a car manufacturing plant. So this injection here is new injection, right? All right. So what happens? What happens is it's going to obviously uh, increase this to 670 billion. If you see this 20 is the difference between these two. 670 minus 650, we get 20 billion. So what does that do? It's going to cause a disproportionate change in aggregate demand and hence aggregate income. All right, now what does the word proportionate mean? It means if we increase this side by one, we must also increase this side by one. But the minute we increase this side by one and this side goes up by maybe two, we say it's disproportionate. Now, the multiplier effect can be described as a situation where a small change. That's why I said I like to use the word small. Because look at this, it's a small change in spending. But this small change in, spend, in spending causes a dis, 
disproportionate change in aggregate demand. So when there is a disproportionate change in aggregate demand, uh, there is going to be a disproportionate change in aggregate income. So aggregate income is going to go from, let's say, 780 to 880. So it goes up by 100. But what causes it to go up by 100 is what we talked about in the previous lesson is actually the MPC. So the MPC, remember, in this example, it was 0 0.8. So it was K is equal to 1 over 1 minus MPC which is k is equal to 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8. So k is equal to 1 over, what is 1 minus 0 0.8? It's 0 0.2. Then how many times does 0 0.2 go into 1? Let's count. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 1. So it goes 5 times. So our multiplier was 5. So let's multiply this 20 by 5. You see? If we multiply this 20 by 5, what is 20 times 5? The answer is 100. So what is this 100? It's the effect. As simple as that. So do you understand now? I hope you do. Let's move on. So the Keynesian 45 degree diagram is a graphical representation of the Keynesian uh, economics uh, based on the intersection of the aggregate expenditure line and the 45 degree equilibrium guideline. Uh, to set the stage, consider equilibrium to be uh, in the basic uh, Keynesian model, such as the one above. The initial change in investment causes a vertical shift of the aggregate expenditure curve that disrupts the existing equilibrium. I've explained it in the graph below. Uh, in the graph on the previous slide. So aggregate expenditures are measured on the vertical axis and aggregate production is measured on the horizontal axis. So this is just explaining the things that I was just explaining. So yes, you can uh, read word for word. And yes, I've also reminded you on this. I've also calculated it and you have seen it. Right, so um, there isn't much for me to say now because I've explained everything. So now I'm going to give you homework. What does the 45 degree line represent? Study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. Okay, there we go. So we have different figures and yes, calculate. Then name the two sectors involved in deriving the macroeconomic multiplier. Um, what is represented by the line E plus Y and so on. Use this formula, change in J is equal to, ah, change, y, change in Y divided by change in injection to calculate the multiplier for the scenario on, <laughs> on our left. Okay, this was in the textbook. All right, this scenario above or in the previous slide. Calculate the um, multiplier effect in the scenario on your left. What is the relationship between the multiplier and the MPC? Suppose that the MPC is 0 0.6 and investment spending by firms uh, increases by 1 billion rands. Calculate the multiplier effect. All right. Thank you so much, Grid 12. And uh, please subscribe to the channel and also tell your friends to do the same so that you don't miss any, any of these lessons. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll